you are someone researching how to become a SOC analyst online, there are a lot of great resources and I'm sure you are well aware. However, it could be extremely overwhelming to ingest a lot of that. With today's video, I hope I can help you categorize the things that you've learned online to these five essential skills to help you become a SOC analyst. Number one, cybersecurity fundamentals. This includes common threats found in cybersecurity as well as attack vectors and TTPs, also known as tactics, techniques, and procedures. Understanding the fundamentals will help shift our mindset as defenders to identify potential malicious activity and how can we use that to detect and respond to threats. What might be some of the controls or tools that we can use to implement to increase our visibility as well as reduce risk for the organization? And how would someone obtain additional context on a certain artifact like an IP address or a host name? Number two, network fundamentals. Knowledge of networking protocols, TCP IP stack, and architecture as a whole is crucial in understanding network-based attacks, which is why I always recommend Network Plus or at least have the knowledge of networking fundamentals. You will likely see a bunch of network logs, especially if you're working in the SOC. Without networking knowledge, it will be extremely difficult for you to identify and come to a conclusion whether the alert that you received is a false positive or a true positive. Number three, incident handling and response. Now, as a beginner SOC analyst, are you expected to perform incident response? Mm, probably not, but you should be aware of how incidents are handled as well as incident response as a whole. All incidents go through a life cycle and SANS has their life cycle as preparation, identification, containment, eradication, recovery, and lessons learned. Whereas the NIST life cycle has it as preparation, detection and analysis, containment, eradication and recovery, and post-incident. Keep these life cycles in the back of your mind the next time you receive an alert or during an interview and the interviewer asks you a question about ransomware. And how would you go about investigating ransomware. Think about the life cycle and it will help you walk you through the steps. Number four, analytical and problem solving skills. SOC analysts work with large volumes of data every single day. When they receive an alert, they jump into their SIM or whatever tool that they're using trying to understand the bigger picture. Now having strong analytical and problem solving skills is extremely essential to differentiate legitimate activity to suspicious ones. When you're just starting out, it is typically okay to rely on your tools. I mean, that is why the company invests millions of dollars in these cybersecurity tools. But it's also important for you to know that at the end of the day, they are just tools. I want you to eventually get to the level of understanding where you can eventually question the tool's output because from my experience, they're not always correct. The example I like to use is PS Exec. It's a legitimate tool that is used by system administrators. However, it is commonly abused by threat actors and EDR solutions tend to pick it up and block it as suspicious slash malicious activity. If you received that kind of event or alert, how would you tell if it is a false positive or a true positive? Number five, communication skills. SOC analysts work in a team environment, meaning that you'll need to be able to communicate effectively to your colleagues, management, as well as stakeholders, especially about security incidents and the impact it has on an organization. This is especially true when something major happens on your shift, because if you forget to communicate that major event during your shift handover, so to summarize, you'll need cybersecurity fundamentals, networking fundamentals, knowledge on incident handling and response, analytical and problem solving skills, and communication. Remember, becoming a SOC analyst is a continuous journey. I hope you enjoyed that video. And if you found it informative, let me know by hitting that like button and subscribe if you want to.